Hi guys, in this video I want to very quickly take you through doing multiple regression in Excel. I've made this data set uh, using random number generators um, mostly and um, the point here is to just show you how to get the output and where to look in the output. Uh, I make no promises of any uh, kind of great insight from this data. Okay, so as you can see, the, the variables are, are generically named y, x1, x2, x3. Naturally, you know, this is our dependent variable, and these are our independent variables. We want to use these guys to predict this guy. Okay? So in order to do this, we um, can use the data analysis tool pack. So data analysis. and we'll choose regression. Our Y range is going to be all of Y, including the label. Our X range is going to be all our X's. Now these need to be all next to each other. So if, you're, if your X's are spread out across uh, a, a, a bunch of different columns that are separated by something, you need to get them all close to each other like this before you select them like this. Check labels because we are taking in the labels here. Okay. You might have more descriptive labels in your data set. So use those instead of Y, X, and so on. And a lot of this other stuff is some details that I'm going to leave out for this video. Um, we'll focus on the fundamentals. Output. Choose the output to be here. Well, you could choose it to be anywhere. By default, it comes on a new sheet. So I'm going to throw it right here so I could show it to you. Okay, Here's the output. Just Resize a couple columns. There's a lot here. A lot of this we will not discuss. There's some actual redundancy. I'm going to delete that. Okay. Let me highlight the most important items here. So I'm going to do a little highlighting and then discuss them very quickly. So, sorry. So here's our square. We'll talk about that. Here's adjusted R square. Here's N. Here is the p-value for the overall f-test. Here are the coefficients, the intercept, and the slopes. Here is the p-value for the partial slopes. We'll use those to do the individual partial slope t-tests. Okay, And a lot of this other stuff is very informative, but uh, it's some of them are, are building up to for example, our p-value, and some of these are, are in order to calculate our p-values here. Confidence intervals for our, for our partial slopes, for our coefficients in general, and some more kind of multiple r, things we uh, glossed, might have glossed over in class. Okay, so let me focus on what I've highlighted here, because that's what I've told you is important, uh, at least on first pass. Here's r square. So obviously we got a very low R square here. Um, this is saying that roughly 28% of the variability of Y can be explained by the entire set of independent variables that we've considered, which was X1, X2, and X3. Okay, so not the greatest um, uh, output there for R square, not the greatest results I should say for R square. But uh, that's sometimes in some fields that might not be the worst thing. So don't judge it uh, um, uh, too quickly. But uh, obviously it would have been great to see a higher R square. That uh, indicates uh, some predictive power of the of our uh, multiple regression model. Okay, adjusted R square very similar, except it adjusts R square for the number of independent features used the independent variables used and the sample size. So increase the sample size, um, you'll get better results. Uh, increase the number of features, you'll pay a penalty. Okay. So as you see, R square is always going to be a little less than R square. Okay. In this case, quite a bit less. All right. And we use R square mostly to compare between models. Okay. So it's one way to compare between two models that are trying to predict the same dependent variable with a with, with a, a, a slight different subset of variables as the independence. Okay, so whenever you need to compare two models, 
uh, from the same data, uh, I've shown you one method, and that is using adjusted R square. Higher indicates a better um, model. Okay. This is just our sample size. It seems we only had 23 observations. That's quite unfortunate. <laughs> um, so that's n. Um, here, this is the p-value, although it doesn't get labeled p-value for the overall f-test. Remember, h o, h one. The null hypothesis was mm -hmm. that all the partial slopes, in this case there are three independent features, so all the partial slopes, there's three of them, are equal to zero. And the alternative is at least one of these guys, so at least one of those betas I've written above. Not equal to zero. Okay for i equals 1, 2, 3, obviously. Okay, so at least one of these guys is not equal to 0. So what HO was saying is that there's no useful linear relationship between any of those three independent features and y. What H1 is saying is that there is at least one useful linear relationship between one of the in, at least one of the independent features and y. It could be all of them. It could be um, just one, it could be two, it could be a couple, uh, there's different ways that um, it could happen, but this isn't, that's why we call this the overall test, okay, because it does a lot at once, um, it doesn't tell you the details. If you reject this, in this case p-value is 0.09, if alpha was 0.05, we would fail to reject, okay, so in this case we would fail to reject, so actually we, there is not much evidence against this, okay. That's what happens when you make up data. Um, so if you fail to reject, which we do here because our p-value is 0.09, alpha is 0.05, then you would not go on to do the individual t-test, which I'm about to describe. You would actually stop right there and throw out this model and reconsider uh, the whole situation and what you want to do about it. Um, but if we did re reject HO, we would go on to do the individual t-tests, which the p-values are right here. Okay, so the t-test for beta 1, which is for x1, is, I'll just do one of these, is that the slope of x1, or we use 1 here, right, is equal to 0 versus it's not equal to 0. In other words, uh, x1 is it has no... A significant linear relationship with with y and alternative x1 has some useful linear relationship with y be it positive or negative we look at the p-value it's 0.09 again which is greater than alpha 0.05 we would fail to reject so x1 would not be a useful linear predictor we might consider throwing it out of the model and rerunning the model we do the same thing except this becomes 2 2 for x2 now p-value is very high. We would definitely throw out, consider throwing out x2. We would fail to reject. And finally, x3, it's very close. We hate these situations, but it's very close. We would fail to reject if we were strictly adhering to our rule. If alpha was 0.05, this is slightly larger, so we would fail to reject. But it's pretty close. We would consider keeping x3. Okay, we, we would fail to reject there still, but it's very close, okay? If you have to make a strict rule about it, you would fail to reject all these hypothesis tests, okay? So it seems like there's nothing good coming out here, but you ex you kind of expected that when we did the overall F test, right? Um, just to be complete, let's write out the regression model, okay? So y hat, here I don't have a name for y, so it's, it's y. y hat equals the intercept. So let me just truncate and leave off the decimal places, but you shouldn't do that. So negative 85 plus 1.17 times x1 plus 0 0.07 times x2 plus, let me swing it around here, 0.49 times x3. This would be our regression model here. If you had actual names for these variables, which you should, 
you would put those names here instead of x123. If you had a, a y, a name for y, like number of uh, victories or price or temperature, then you would put that here and make sure you put the hat. The hat will always remind you that this, and, and anyone interpreting your results, that this was a prediction. That this doesn't tell you what y is, it predicts what y is. Okay, so of course we left out a lot of details of some exploratory data analysis that you would do before you even jumped into all this. Understanding the data, understanding that this was all, they were all numerical um, variables and so on and so forth. I wanted to jump straight to the functionality of the data analysis tool pack and just show you highlights very quickly as I did the output that um, you'll need to, uh, to complete um, a, a basic analysis of the multiple regression model. Okay, so I hope this was somewhat helpful. Till next time, have a great day.